This is a boring video about geology, but not just any geology. This is the geology of Canadian gold. Good morning. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over some of the rocks that are on the Dry Gulch property. I've got a old map where um, some of the prospectors from the past looking for gold in the gold veins in the uh, actual rocks. Um, they scoured that place good and they labeled them all. Now, um, we're looking for placer golds, not, not necessarily. Uh, gold in the rocks like they were so the same property to us is, is like brand new it's uh, unexplored because they weren't looking for placer gold they, they just dug down wherever there was um, ridges they didn't uh, trench for instance to uh, to find placer gold at the bottom of a you know, on the uh, <laughs> bedrock so um, I'm in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, and just north of us for the next thousand miles is <laughs> huge gold bearing area. Um, Shining Tree is and uh, Milnet. Um, let's see, um, Milnet was a big one. There's still a mine there. Shining Tree is another hundred kilometers north of us, and there's six or seven open veins just in the Shining Tree property. Um, and something like 11 mines um, and Shining Tree is only like you know an inch square on a map that's three feet square right there's a lot of terror and that's just uh, in <laughs> how can you put this in the southern part of northern Ontario right it's not a large um, piece of property compared to the whole but there are many other mining companies up there exploring and they're they're drilling at a phenomenal rate they're checking this these properties at a phenomenal rate right so it just goes to show you there's still gold to be found don't let that f you know the the old saying not all the gold is gone don't don't let that here i tell you what i'm going to start this out if i can find it i will read you what a geologist had to say about this area Okay, this I call the uh, glacial placer deposits north of Dry Gulch. Okay, we're going to redo uh, a little snippet. I'll bring it over here. Okay, Let's stick it up in here. The nature of gold, placer gold, which occurs in deposits, is not coarse but is of shot size variety. Now, if you've ever been around a shotgun and opened up a shell, you'll find the little pellets. That's what he's talking about. He's comparing it to those. Uh, if you had a few of those, five or ten, <laughs> you've got something, don't you? Right? There's there's color in that pan then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it is readily concentrated using gravity separation in a medium of water. Okay. It's, it's panned. Simple. Gold fragments are free and not associated with or attached to any mineral or rock fragments. So where did it come from? See, it was broken off of a rock fragment that had gold in it at some point. Um, nuggets are not common, although pieces up to about 50 milligrams have been encountered. There are two types of gold in the deposit which have different physical characteristics. One type occurs as a bright yellow fragments of small size. This type appears to occur in deposits near the surface. Now, isn't that beautiful? You get nice shiny gold near the surface, right? I'll tell you in a bit how near the surface that is. You got to do some work still. The other type occurs as a rusty colored fragments that usually um, that is usually coarser than the former. Okay, so you got a slightly heavier um, type of gold down on the bedrock, right? and a uh, more coppery color, right? And up above, you've got this shiny stuff. So that would indicate there's two types of gold. Where did they come from? 
Well, I've got, I've got a bit of a, a suspicion, you might say. It's, it's. Um, I've been learning an awful lot about gold for the last roughly ten years. Okay, and where it's found, what kind of rocks, the states, Canada, all through, all across Canada, parts of Europe, parts of South America. Um, and that's not a brag. I'm, I'm far from as knowledgeable as some of the geologists around here, but I believe that sometimes having uh, fresh eyes looking at you know the same thing, you see things differently. Very recently in uh, Australia, there was a gold mine for sale uh, by a Canadian group from Toronto. You may have heard of it. Um, they didn't sell it. It wouldn't sell. Okay, there was gold there. I mean, they literally got pictures of the gold in the in the veins, you know, in the quartz. It's that it wasn't enough for any company to really want to go after it. So it was not selling, and they they continued working it a little bit. Well, all of a sudden they broke into a vein they didn't know previously was there, and the fellow um, that was on the news said it's about the size of your living room that in a space of about the size of your living room they found 15 million dollars worth of gold the biggest um, nugget in the world was found in that at that time it's huge okay it's it's like you take a, a bucket it w you know a, a five gallon pail it probably won't fit in it very well right if it does it's going to be very awkward it was huge and they had a couple others similar that were just pulled right out of the rock, right? So, and they they now have a suspicion <laughs> that there's several other living room size um, deposits further up along that uh, that uh, intrusion. Okay, so what's an intrusion? An intrusion is where you have the land, and then all of a sudden you have some foreign rock. That, let's see if I can put my hands up where you can see it. The foreign rock pushes up, right? And now you have land on this rock on this side, an intrusion in the middle, and rock on this side. So let's say that it was quartz, okay? You'd have a crack, and then quartz would fill it, is what they usually say, because quartz becomes uh, is a is a liquid when it first forms. Well, in this case, you can get dikes or intrusions of almost any kind of rock. You can get some kind of a magnetic rock, uh, uh, an ore, coming up from the bottom. You can get um, volcanic rock coming up from the bottom. You can get other kinds of rock that aren't common to this area all of a sudden showing up because it became liquid at some state and broke loose from down there and pushed its way up through. I, I have suspicions why that's happening too, but basically what he's found, um, what they found in Australia, okay, it was not supposed to happen, right? All the gold is gone, remember? That's what they keep telling us. Everybody says that. Oh, everything that's worth finding has already been found. Okay, just north of us, we know for a fact the Ring of Fire has caught fire, okay? Like, uh, there's mines popping up all over the place up there. They're going crazy looking for gold. Why? Because all the gold is gone? No, because it's there. Because it's still there. Nickel. We thought for sure, you know, we'd found all the nickel in the world. And, and 15, 20 years ago, I believe it was, in Labrador, they found the biggest nickel deposit in all of Canada. Okay, maybe the world, right? So, no, it's not all gone. Not by a, sh a long shot. Even a property like Dry Gulch that was thoroughly checked, there's still a possibility of gold veins. Why? Because not all gold veins are in intrusions up on a ridge where you can see it. Not all gold veins are on rocks. You can see some of them are in the bedrock. And there's lots of good reasons for this. When you get an intrusion popping up over here, okay, say say this, eh, this is an, an intrusion area, okay, these fingers pop up and can form a ridge, right, or a bump. Okay, what it does is it pushes these and, and it pushes them this way, sideways, and then superficial cracks go all the way through these, all the way through, and up comes minerals. Minerals like quartz, other minerals, and metals come with that, right? Um, gold, silver, platinum group metals, all of it. Um, some of the reading I've read, those cracks from an intrusion or a dike coming up 
could actually be up to a, a, a kilometer or more away. So if there's all these rocks, ridges all over your property, and one of them has a dike right through your property, guess what? Under the ground, there is possibility of intrusions that didn't come up as high, but came up fairly fruitful. Likelihood? Slim. But that's what gold hunting is all about. It's about going after something. See, we know the place you're gold there. Okay, this is, this is from the Milnet area, this, this um, report I'm reading to you about the shot size gold. Right. Uh, this type of care is near uh, in deposits near the surface. Okay. The other is a rusty colored fragments. Right. Um, this type occurs at deeper horizons in the deposits. Now, usually that's bedrock, but it might be above. The significance of these physical characteristics is not readily apparent. A study of the chemical composition and the texture of the two types may reveal features of importance but that I know of, nobody's done that study. Both types of gold are ubiguous. Okay, now that's, a, that's an interesting word. What does ubiguous mean? Ubiguous throughout the glacial fluvial deposits. Well, I've got a simple way of finding out. Let's take a look and see what the internet tells me ubiguous means I have a suspicion especially because we look at the context of it right so it says all um, however like all places concentrations occur in certain pay streaks within the deposits where the conditions obtained um, were favorable to the accumulation ubiguous is existing or being everywhere at the same time Okay, so let's go back and read that again. Both types of gold are everywhere throughout the glacial fluvial deposits. Well, what's the next sentence? However, all like all placers, concentrations occur in certain pay streaks. So there is. I've been saying this all along. Okay, um, for for years I've been bugging people. I talk a lot about it. Um, there's gold through all of it. We've invented machines for pulling out fine gold. According to this description, there's shot size gold throughout all of it. And then there's this other gold that's a little more. And it says here that it's throughout all of it. However, just like a placer, you'll get streaks, right? Okay. So you get streaks where it's more dense. That's what he's saying. Okay, I'll reread it just so you know. However, like all placers, concentrations occur in pay streaks within the deposits where the conditions obtained, which that one's okay. <laughs> within the deposits where conditions were favorable to the accumulation and concentration of gold, these pay streaks are narrow and are limited in lateral extent. Okay, so. They are, however, repetitive within the glacial fluvial channelways. So you've got gold throughout the whole thing, but you've got concentrations in these pay streaks that just, just pretty much like anything, okay? But in this case, you're being told that there's a lot more gold in the ground and north of here, all the way up, no wonder. There are so many mines up there and Shining tree property, like I said, is only a tiny little thing on a huge map, okay? There is a lot of land north of Dry Gulch that is going to be amazingly covered, just like Shining Tree, in open um, gold sitting on the surface, okay? And and people think, oh, no, that's it. like it's all been found. No. These, the, the prospectors tended to be looking at sulfides and, and minerals that they can see on the surface. They can't strip the whole of the north. Um, but just to show you, there, there was another mine. I can't remember the name of it. I watched a video on it um, three or four years ago, and the video is already a couple years old. And these two fellows, one of them flew in in his, his plane and went down on the ice. Um, and another one walked in, and uh, they met 
these two prospectors. Now this was, you know, you had to do things the way they used to do it. You had to g get out there and actually mark your property. So these two boys bumped into each other, had a little chit chat, and decided to go in on this together because they both had been surmising what the area is like. And they both surmised the same thing. There's gold there. It just hasn't been found. There, there was volcanic gold there in northern Ontario. It just had not been found. Guess what? They were right. And they drilled something like 75 boreholes, and they were about to shut it down when number 75 hit a vein so rich that instantly millions and millions of dollars were spent on putting up a mine, and that mine is still going today. So I just wish I could remember the name, but I'm sorry about that. The point, though, don't discount any piece of land until it has been 100% checked. Right? That's all there is to it. Until somebody goes and looks, how can you say it's not there? Okay, so what else? The origin of the placer gold concentrations in this glacial, glacial fluvial deposits in the map area can, that's the map area is north of here, right? can probably be related to four important factors. In the case of the map area, there are two main features which distinguish it from glacial Precambrian as a whole. There are the existence of pre-glacial north-south valley, which no doubt marked a river, and which controlled ice movements and drainage to a marked degree. I agree. I've, I've seen the evidence. Whenever I've looked at um, what's going on, I've, I've seen a north-south movement um, of the glaciers. Right? There's not a lot of styrations here like there are in the rocks in some places, so finding um, the direction, you, you can tend to look at all the land masses, zoom out on a topical map and look at which way are all the ridges facing because, believe it or not, that's what the glaciers caused. Okay, number two, the occurrence of the north of the area of the porcupine and shining tree load deposits. Two other features of importance are. Let's let's look at number two again. The occurrence to the north of porcupine and shining tree load deposits. So I'm only talking from Sudbury to Shining Tree. This gentleman here is explaining that the reason that there's gold here, that the glaciers can drop here was because even further north of Shining Tree, there's a lot of gold. So you got that from a geologist, not from a uh, wannabe prospector. <laughs> okay, right. Um, that was respect, uh, respectfully submitted. It says by R. J. Cook, geologist. So there you go, the real deal, right? Um, the other one here is the possibility of there being pre-glacial placer gold concentrations which were not entirely dissipated by glacial action. Well, I was explaining that at the beginning of the video. Um, um, when glaciers go south and you know they come up against a ridge, they, they're carrying a lot of the materials and that materials get scraped off. It stays here. Okay? And then they go over and they go down and they drop even more on the on the lee side. And then on the uh, when they go down, you know, take everything that they are still carrying that they can take with them because there's different layers in the glacier. It's not all one layer. Um, they go down to say the USA, drop a whole bunch of our wonderful rocks and gold for them. Really nice of us. We're Canadian. <laughs> I like the U.S. Okay. So anyway, back comes the glacier as it's melting, and it drops stuff all the way along, strips at the top of the ridge, drops stuff again. So you got two layers right there. Right? It's going to pile up several feet high. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, like I said, I have my ideas on how this goal got there. Well, this guy's explaining that it is there and what he believes, where it came from. And he believes it was moved by glaciers and some of it was pre-glacial. Well, where did pre-glacial get from? Um, how did that spread? I'm not sure. Could it have been a flood? Um, for those of us who read the Bible, it could have been a flood. For those of us that haven't, I don't know. We weren't there, so um, I don't have anybody else's writing. I have this gentleman's writing about the gold that's currently north of me. 
and I believe that. I have the Bible which says there was a flood. I personally believe it. You may not. Okay, we're not going to argue over that. What I'm saying is, it was a, it was a, it would be a great way to circulate gold around, to spread it all over. Okay, even better than the trails that we get from these glaciers. Okay, because there's many layers and and it is separated, d uh, disseminated differently. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So the possibility of there being pre-glacial gold concentrations, which were not entirely dissipated by glacial action, I believe that the concentrating powers of the torrential glacial streams, the fact that the flow of the glacial streams was more or less confined to pre-existing valleys between rock pro prominence prominences, could have been of prime importance, affecting concentration in the map area. Okay, that could be too. You've got, you know, different layers. Um, he's not 100% sure how it happened, but it could be. The glaciers did it. Or before the glaciers, the flood, right? If you don't like the flood, you're anti-biblical. Think of it this way. A flood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not all floods are global. But, okay. So, now that's, that's what that gentleman has to say. So, there you go. If you are anywhere from Sudbury, looking north, uh, you can go through any river you want. You're going to find glacial um, gold. And if you can get further north in the, in the glaciers, north of Timmins and Shining Tree and all these places, right, there's gold up there. Lots of gold. And there's even gold down our way, but possibly not as much. We'll find out. Okay, so this beautiful rock that I've got up on the screen, I've got to close some stuff because there it is. has what they've called amphibolite. Okay, now I actually uh, looked up each of these rock names because I'll be honest, they're tongue twisters. And I'm not a geologist. I'm a guy that's studied everything to do with gold. There's a lot involved. This is one of the things. If you're in the area to the north and you see a rock like this, you've got a quartz intrusive into a, um, into a rock, right? And it says this amphibolite is a grouping of rocks composed mainly of amphibole and um, play geoclase, felspars, with little or no quartz. No, I'm sorry, that looks like quartz, but see what he's talking about on the right here? Has little or no quartz in it, right? Amphibole is a metaphoric rock that contains amphibole, especially the species hornblend, and where is it? Come on, uh, actinolite, as well as placeo, placeo, clays. Okay, so that's what's in this dark side right here. Okay. Uh, most of these rocks I did find from local sources, like uh, pictures online from local sources. Uh, some of them you'll actually see on the picture, the um, the website or person, right? I'm not claiming these images are mine by any means. Um, when you don't see it, it's because uh, it was, you know, Wikipedia it was a free image, you know. Okay, this is biotite. <coughs> Excuse me. Biotite uh, is a name used for a large group of black mica minerals that are commonly found in igneous and metamorphic rocks. These include um, anite, phlogopite, cider, this is a weird one, siderophyllite. Siderophyllite. And that's something, eh? Um, there's this one. Uh, Fleur o flog o pite. Fleur o flog o pite. This one. Fleur a night. Uh, I, I always think that one's funny. Fleur a night. 
That's the, it's the vampire of the rock family. <laughs> it only comes out at night. It's a flower. It's a flower of, uh, for you know. It comes out at night. East tonight, right? And many others. These micas vary in chemical composition, but are all um, sheet silicate minerals with very similar physical characteristics. Okay, when I was um, a couple of springs ago, I went down to my buddy Mike's in Bing Inlet, and um, down in his area, there's a lot of these uh, micas, and they are sheet-like, and I mean. You know, I saw areas where it's at least a foot square, not quite square, square, but, you know, a foot in diameter. Um, up here, I've only ever seen any that um, would be, like, very tiny, size of a fish scale at the most. That that's actually like a sheeting or flaking off material. Um, quite often what you'll get more is a solid inside of a rock with very little flaking on the outside. Okay, so next one. This is Bracia. Now I'm gonna. It's Bracia, Bracia, consisting of angular fragments of rock. Bracia may form from scree or broken rocks. Scree is broken rocks. Okay, at the bottom of cliffs. Right? Broken rocks, mud, all that stuff. Scree, it's garbage rocks, okay? Okay, so that's it for today. Um, like I was saying throughout this, there's still a lot of gold to be found out there. It's where you look. And um, taking the time to learn about the area you're, you're hunting in, uh, whether you're panning or elsewise, and how it's done. There's so much online on YouTube. It's amazing. And... Um, I always look at it as though the goal is on the bottom. So let's get down to it. It's that simple. Hope you can get there too. And if not, join myself, Mike, and Dustin while we do it. <laughs> okay, take care guys.